Hello, this is First Fire Non-Assault Move. Welcome back to the 19th video in the War in the East series. Well, we'll, let's ca we'll call this uh, video 19 Alpha because it's going to be real short. I haven't been uh, creating content for a while. Uh, not to get into the weeds and the dirty details, but it's been extremely busy. Very, very busy at work and other things conflicting things in life and I've uh, had to step back from doing YouTube content uh, definitely want to get back into it and here is my step in the right direction in doing so uh, love this game don't want to stop uh, just getting home after work all I could do is regroup and do some zoning out activities <laughs> And full transparency, I've kind of, during that um, mindless, relaxing activities, I got back into X4 Foundations, which I really love. Uh, get into that later, and I, you know, it's a little foreshadowing, I think. I think, I very much think that we will uh, be doing a series on X4 uh, Foundations. Yeah, so... War games, hardcore war games, will always be my first love growing up on Advanced Squad Leader and all those wonderful Avalon Hill titles and SPI and GDW. Uh, so the, the channel at the core of it, the it'll be hardcore war games uh, for this channel content and theme, but I do love other games, um, and X4 Foundations is kind of... Uh, roped me in uh, but we'll get more into that uh, let's talk about war in the east here so when we left off it was all about the weather and the mud slowing down the german advance and how we were coping with that we had that grand encirclement just doing a little recap here that uh we pulled just managed to pull off before mud and bad weather now snow or frost it looks like and there's, it was probably five, six, six weeks in total, not all contiguous, of bad weather that totally interrupted offensive operations. And it was four weeks, 28 days, 28 days straight of mud, four straight turns of mud, which we couldn't do anything. And it's non, it's random weather, it's non-historical, that's the setting we had, and this is the cards we're being dealt we look up here it is the third week of November so we're well well on our way into the first winter on the Eastern Front that dreaded 1941 winter it's random so we we're not sure we're gonna get the full brunt the historical uh, catastrophic weather the Germans endured uh, so we'll see how it goes um, I was worried about it but I'm not too worried about it we're we're doing pretty good you know, at the very beginning, we talked about victory conditions. Go to info screens, and we can look at victory conditions, and it outlines what exactly victory looks like for the Germans. At 142 to 199, we have a minor victory right now, and we're on the cusps of getting an Axis major victory on ending turn, which is like 240. 55 turns and we're on 23 <laughs> long way to go long way to go so much can happen but we want to end the war in the east with 290 plus victory points which we will accomplish and the uh, long-term strategic uh, planning was having us win the war in 1943 so we have a long way to go even to that milestone all right we'll get rid of that uh just to recap again the front leningrad the soviets had started to concentrate at the very first couple of weeks of june and they haven't stopped and we've seen those formations make their way to the front a slog all along Army Group North front fighting 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 their way through terrible terrain 
largely unsupported by any mechanized forces because really what could mechanized forces do in this terrain infantry doing incredible work incredible work and this is what it looks like right now and as we go further south into army group centers area of operations they have this shoulder starting right around Velikai Luki uh, protecting army group centers northern flank and that has played out over a few months and we held strong and we pushed the Soviets back and we're we're inching our way east of Smolensk and we're digging in you can see those defensive uh, combat values right there pretty pretty solid Soviets will really have to to mass and, and act, conduct an actual offensive not localized attacks to do any to place any threat on our German forces coming down here I uh, remember we diverted Army Group Center's Panzer Corps to link up with Army Group South in a similar fashion historically what the the Germans were able to accomplish around Kiev and only remnants left I think there's four divisions left out of over 50 easily 50 divisions that we we destroyed in the pocket so with mud clearing and frost or snow uh, besetting us we can still conduct limited of offensive operations which after reconstituting and finishing off largely the pocket uh, the Germans have broken through north of Kursk and south of Kursk and a limited breakthrough let's see that should be Sumi yeah Sumi and Pol Pol Poltava yeah so we want to take Kursk we want to take Sumi and we'd like to take Poltava and if we have any luck in the you know this is non-historic weather so we're gonna maybe be non-historic in our operations we I expect that we're going to attack throughout the winter rather than go into hibernation don't see much uh, that the Soviets can do with this breakthrough here the 18th Panzer is way out on a limb but uh, we shattered shattered a whole bunch of Soviet formations here over the past two turns two weeks of fighting in the snow uh, and overrun some airfields again and a whole bunch of routed and shattered Soviet formations they will probably pull out of Kursk these formations here which is fine we don't really we're not striving to encircle we just don't have the mobility and the combat uh, the uh, combat the the movement and the combat power to make any large encirclements maybe isolated here and there get five or six divisions a baker's dozen here and there maybe this group here it's forming up uh, a lot of attacks Soviets are pretty strong they got some thick lines here defending in depth so it's really hard to get breakthroughs but we managed to up near Kursk all right and we're trying to reassemble reorganize army group south and army group uh, centers divisions as they made that link up so it was kind of a kind of a pot pori of divisions and core mixed together between the two army groups we want to reorganize and get um, better command and control and uh, get in our own get into each army groups uh, proper area of operations okay so uh, because of fuel and because of the weather we are not we haven't been able to bring down Army Group South's Panzer Corps that went pretty far north 
to complete the encirclement. So we want to have that. Um, we want to accomplish that eventually because right now Army Group South is stripped a lot of its combat power of its Panzer Corps. But we did have that one Panzer Corps down here. The third, I believe, third Panzer Corps holding the line and stiffening the extended uh, our extended infantry divisions and our Axis allies in and around this industrial region. We pushed over the Dnieper way down south here in the Crimea, which is good, but really the Romanians can't do much. They just can keep the pressure on and hold the line. Uh, so operationally, and some st strategic objectives again will be Kursk, Poltava, and Sumy as the major cities. More victory points, and with any luck, Kharkov. If we can have Kharkov by the turn of the year, that would be great. So I was recording, I thought I was recording a lot of these moves, so I, I didn't capture any of this, so I apologize for that. But this is a situation report, and I am going to get this video up so you can know I am still fully engaged with the war in the East. Well, over the past two weeks I haven't mentally, physically having the time. Um, i got to wrap my head around against plans for... Uh, this winter here what we're gonna do about certain things and just just get back in it so that's it this is where we're looking this is what we're looking like in uh, the beginning the real beginning of the winter uh, supply we're gonna have some pretty good railroads uh, railheads right up against the front by the spring of 1942 which would be great still have to worry about chasing off partisans and we really have to see what the soviets have in store for us during the winter the plan was to keep them even though it wasn't always advantageous always always attack always attack even though it wasn't the best advantageous um odds and resolutions for us but it's kept the Soviets off balance and it's kept their front fragmented except here in front of Moscow what well, we expected that they're gonna put everything but the kitchen sink before Moscow yeah so that is the situation no 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 encirclements potentialities uh, no potential encirclements are uh, before us right now. Maybe this little group here, but I doubt it. They're probably going to pull back. Which is fine. Straightening the lines is always always a goal of ours to um, get economy of force and not have our division stretched. The more we're stretched, the less combat power we can apply at certain points. Alright. I think that's going to be it. I am going to get this video up as a um, a uh, re-engagement of this uh, war in the east and bring it to you to my uh, wonderful viewers and yeah I will finish up this turn and put up another video of the outcome of the rest of the turns it's not going to be much because I'm almost done this turn but uh, let's get something up now so uh, yeah can restart and get the batteries charged up again and get motivated to continue the war in the east all right so yeah looking forward to uh, bringing other other games other content to the channel but this will be the meat and potatoes right now War in the east love this game and I think we have a shot. I think we have a shot at winning here on the Eastern Front. All right. Uh, thank you for your patience uh, and waiting around for, for more content to come up. All right. So I'll catch you later. This is First Fire, non-assault move, out.